we're up to chapter 26, verse um, 21. Chapter two. We're reading the passage from the Torah called the Tochacha, called the Curses. It says, Vim tochi imi keri, if you walk with me casually. The word carry, we always used to make jokes about this in yeshiva when, when I was there. John Kerry was running for president. So the, the boys didn't like him too much. What year was that? I have no idea. But they're like, if you go with Kerry, it's not going to be good. That's what they were saying. I don't even remember what year that was. I don't even remember who he running. Did he run against Obama? Oh, he was. Yeah, he was. Wait one second. He never was the candidate for president? Bush? Yeah, like 2000 and 2000? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't remember. 2004, I was here already. You're right, right, right. Yeah, 2000, I came here. He was Carrie Edwards. Okay, I don't want to call her a girl. She's probably a 300 by now. Okay, it says, but me carry. If you walk with me uh, casually, and you don't and you don't listen to me, I'll strike you. I'll strike you a blow seven, seven times, just like your sins. I'll give you seven blows because you committed seven sins, as we said yesterday. Rashi says, "If what does it mean that you walk with me casually?" So Rashi says, "The word carry means Rabbi Seno Amru Arai casually, b'mikre by chance." So Eno El Prakim. Sometimes, when it's convenient for you, you'll go with me. Kain Tachui Mi Arai b'mitzvah. If you walk with me casually in the commandments, um, so. Right, so that's now what Rashi says. But Rashi gives a second explanation, which says harshly, that they harden their hearts to hold back. But Rashi's first approach is incredibly scary. Because who doesn't, uh, he's basically saying, if you take a casual approach to religion, casual approach to God. Okay, you know the story. The guy, every day, his mother gives him two dollars, two single, two coins. Each one is worth a dollar. He said, once for charity, once for ice cream. And then the boy is on his way to school and he trips and the coin falls into the sewer. And he looks up at heaven and he says, God, sorry about your coin today. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's the point. The point is, if you walk with God casually, that's how Rashi understands it. Steinzeltz probably doesn't want to take such a harsh approach because Steinzeltz trying to like sanitize a little bit for his American audience because like the definition of religion in America is casual if you're very serious about it they call you a zealot yeah so anyway Sheva what who was wrong no I'm not saying that Rashi was wrong I'm saying that Rabbi Steinzel doesn't adopt the first approach of Rashi Rashi's almost certainly Correct in the uh, biblical meaning of the word that carry means by chance, but casually, happenstance. If you only walk with me when it's convenient for you, okay, you know, I'm walking by a synagogue, I got nothing to do, I'll go in and pray. As opposed to making it an essential part of your life, a focus of your life. That's what Rashi is saying. So if you do that, you're going to be punished by Hashem. Sometimes it's not all that different. It's happenstance. But he connects it to seeing bad things happening and saying, well, you know, that's just the way it is. And not connected to God, to our share. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so then that is what Rashi's saying. Well, not only that, if, if you say that, if you say, I'm not saying you should say anything differently, but if you say a natural disaster happened because of a specific sin, you will definitely be canceled. That there is no, there is no doubt. I'm not recommending that people do that, but the Torah does say that if that if you don't, if you sin, natural disasters happen. So all those people are doing is 
saying, repeating the Torah. Now, obviously, we believe that we have to filter out through the Torah, through rabbinic, through rabbinic wisdom, and that there is a filter. But I'm saying those people are just translating the Torah without the filter. Yes, Rabbi Kiva. Say this again. Yeah, well, Sodom and Gomorrah. Bad cities. I think it is crazy to say it because even though the Torah is saying it here, the the Hashem's ways now are hidden from us. We're not living in a time of prophecy, revealed prophecy, or we're not living in a time where God's ways are revealed. So, so if anybody wants to say that we know exactly what how how God is working, then I'm saying just as a suggestion. Right, right. But as a suggestion, the suggestion could be very wrong. And therefore, since it could be very wrong, it could be very, very hurtful to the people who are who are already suffering from this disaster. So the only thing that what I do think we could say, or the message I think we can apply from these verses is that when something happens uh, to us, like to our lives, a natural disaster, uh, a family disaster, an emotional disaster, we could take it as a moment for how we can improve ourselves spiritually, how we can grow. So that's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think God's ways are that revealed. I don't think we, I don't recommend that. I don't think God's ways are that revealed. I think what we could do is look at how we can take this path in our life and grow. Yes, yeah, Shoshana. He's talking about how to deal with natural disasters. In his context, it's to feed the families and more. People with counseling their causes them to grow in the So, well, you mean, it, if you're saying what we did, let's say politically, like we should have built a higher fence, then we wouldn't have been attacked on October 7th, then maybe. But if you're saying that, well, it's because we had this sin of uh, not giving enough charity or have too many homeless people in our in our city, then what you're doing is you're giving your prophecy and you're giving a prophetical insight. And the Talmud says, after the temple was destroyed, prophecy was given over to the foolish people. Uh, so meaning to say prophecy ceased. So we're no longer prophets and we no longer have that authority or that insight, that divine insight to be able to give such, uh, such connections. Um, if you want to say that as a society, we need to have some introspection to look about how we can make better use of our time on earth, that's okay. That's what Rabbi Shantos says. Keep doing the same things and don't hurt the body. Besides, disease, famine, and war. I just think about, for example, the Vietnam which could be the bird basket from Africa, which is not, because they keep having these wars. And yeah, I don't know anything about it. Right? So we do I mean, yeah, for sure. What's going on in Ethiopia? A lot, and I don't know anything about it. We had a man here, a wonderful man on Shabbat from Sudan. He can't go back to Sudan because they're trying, they're, they're, they would kill him. So I don't know how Sudan's doing either. <laughs> You sure. He said he said in in his town in, in his province he said in his province in Sudan 1500 people are being killed every day. No, moaning. He didn't he say 1500 people are being killed every day in his Yeah. Yeah, millions of people. It's only, I mean, Jews are the greatest story ever 
told since we left exit since we left egypt we've been the best seller so people want to follow us and and they hate us so that's that okay so, so now let's go on uh verse 22 oh <clears throat> i'm going to tell you something also very powerful and emotional and it will send upon you the wild animals of the field and they will bereave you and they will exterminate your cattle and they will diminish your number and your roads will become desolate. Okay, so this word shikla means bereaved. Now, my uh, friend Metal, when her husband was killed and she gave a speech at the funeral, she said, this was her expression. She said, I had a dream to build a mishpacha with David, but instead of building a mishpacha, I mean the family. I had a dream to build a family, but instead we are. I am now joining mishpachat shikulim, which means the families of the bereaved. Is, uh, basically her friends now are the, are the widows, the, the other widows. That, so she, there's a whole family of bereaved people in Israel now. Mishpachat Shikulim, the family of the bereaved. So that's this word here. So let's see what this verse means. Vishlachti. Rashi says Vishlachti means Lashon Geiroi, an expression of inciting. Et Chayat Hasadeh. Shomorecha Merbaruch. I will send upon you the uh, wild animals of the field. Vishiklaetchem. The wild animals will bereave you. I only know from this that a wild animal will bereave you because that's its nature. That's what a like a lion does or a bear. Even though it might not be its nature, it's not so surprising if there's a lion attack or a bear attack. That's um, kind of expected. But behema, but what about an, a domesticated animal? A sheep or a goat or a or a cow, Shane Darkabakach, they don't usually attack. How do we know that they will be attacking also? As the verse states, Vishain Behemot Ashalachbam. This is the verse from from the curses at the end of at the end of the Torah. Vishain Behemot Ashalach Bam, the tooth of the behemoth, domesticated animals, I will send upon you. Haresh tayim, and there are two punishments, meaning to say, I will send upon you both the chayot, which is here, and the behemoth, the wild animals and the domesticated animals. It's like animal farm. mimita bin shichata, and how do I know that it will kill you with its bite? Says the verse, im chamat zochei afar, with the venom of those that slither on the ground, the snake bite. Uh, it was a yesterday, I was running in Rock Creek Park. I was running up a big hill. Um, what's it called? Oh, Sa- Sally Ridge or something. Snake. There was a snake the size of this table. I almost tripped over. Yeah. I, I don't know. It was black. What co- You're saying it's harmless? Yeah. You say it's harmless. That thing could have killed me. So... <laughs> It was huge. I didn't get that close. I didn't get that close. I didn't stop to examine it. I, well, this was big. I didn't say it was poisonous. I said it was big. Let's just put it this way. I was shocked. And then I, I, I jumped over and ran. Then I looked around to make sure nobody's watching me. <laughs> when I was little, I was walking the park with my dad, and we saw a black rat snake, and he picked it up and just handed it to me. And he says, But I like having some tricks. So. <laughs> I feel like you got to say that. He said, First of all, he says, First point, he says, It's not just the chayot. It's not just because later on it says behemot. So it's both. And then, yeah, well, I don't know. We haven't got to that yet. Then he says, 
How do we know that it will kill with its bite? Because how, how do we know? But Rashi telling us it will kill with its bite. It says the verse im chamad zochay afar ma eu no shchenu mitin af eu no shchenu mitin. Just like the snake bites and kills, so too will these animals. And then kvar are you shanim be'eret Yisrael? There've already been years in the land of Israel. Chamor no sheikh um meet aro no sheikh um meet where donkeys and wild donkeys bite and kill. Uh, so basically, the same word shalach appears here. Vishlachti b'chemet chayat asadeh v'shem b'emot as shalach bam. So that implies that they're both going to be the same type. Now, how else is a sheep going to kill you except for with its bite? A sheep can't kill you any other way. I mean, it can't kill you with its kick. It's a little wimpy animal. So it's got a bite. Maybe it's got some rabies. Do sheep get rabies? Probably, right? They, they can carry disease. So it's going to kill you with its bite. What? I mean, if it's, if I've never heard of a sheep biting, but if it has rabies, maybe it bites. Yeah, rams. But he's saying it kills with its bite. Mm -hmm. Probably if we look up on Google, we'll see how many people die every year from a sheep, and it's probably more than win the lottery. <laughs> Probably, we had no idea how dangerous they are. Vishikla, and I will bereave you. Elu akatanim. Rashi says this refers to the bereavement of parents through the death of their children. That's what it says. Vishikla atchem, v'achrita atchem techem, and I will exterminate your cattle mi bachutz. Your cattle, the ones that are on the outside, will be exterminated. You are inside, so you will be diminished but not exterminated. So Rashi so is telling us, and the Torah is telling us, your animals from your livestock are going to be exterminated. And I will diminish you, diminish your number, and and your roads will become desolate. I remember this... Um, I don't know if anybody else remembers this, but I'll put it out there. Maybe some of you do. When COVID first started, all the roads were shut down. Remember that? My wife had to go to work every day. She didn't, she didn't miss one day. She went every day. She said it was like the best traffic ever. Never anywhere. But then there were these guys in New York who were waiting their whole life to figure out how quickly they could drive from New York to California. Yeah, they did like a super cannonball run. They waited for like the shutdown and then they went. Yeah, they made it like 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, it was like, like they didn't even take, like they jumped like with the cars, like over, I guess, I don't know, maybe they had a, they had like extra gas or something. I don't know, they did like, they tried to break the record for driving fast. I mean, I'm I'm not endorsing that because supposedly the roads were clear to make room for emergency vehicles. What? Yeah, yeah. These guys, these guys did it, and uh, you can read about it. I, I forgot what it was called. It was, it was uh, a little bit of a lighter story during the those days where the roads became desolate. Rashi says, Shvilim Gedolim Ushvilim Katanim, big trails and small trails. So these are the seven punishments. So yesterday we read about the seven sins. What are the seven punishments? Shame Behema. Shame Chai. You're going to have the tooth of the cattle, the tooth of the wild beast, Hamat Zoche Afar, the venom that slither on the ground, the Shekla will bereave, the Achrita will exterminate. Mito will diminish, Vinasham when your roads will become desolate. Then the Eo really, and if this isn't enough, Balachta me may carry, and you still walk with me casually. Uh, she says, Loti really, if you don't, if you'll still not be chastised by me, Rashuvli Eli, you don't repent. So then, verse 24, Balachi Afani Machem Bekari, I'll also walk casually with you. And I'll strike you again sevenfold for your sins. Wow. God is not lighting up. This is some 
it's trying it's it's trying to scare us straight. But you say very harsh, and of course it is very harsh. But so every day when I would write this Torah for my friend, and I knew that they're having a lot of pain, I always took some positive words from the page that I wrote and highlighted it. You know, like the positive word of the page. It never did negative, like a one or two words. But when I wrote these pages, what are you going to say that's positive? So I said the story of the Kosenberger Rebbe, which I said yesterday, but I'll say it again. As the custom to read the curses on Shabbos, we read it in a low voice and very quickly. The Kosenberger Rebbe lost his wife. His wife was murdered and his 11 children were murdered in the Shoah. So when he was in shul, he came to his shul and the Kosenberger Rebbe rebuilt he built Kiryat Sons in, in Israel. It's just an empire of good. So, but when he was in Brooklyn then, and they were reading this uh, parsha, and the Abai was reading it softly and quickly, and he said, Loud, read it loudly and slowly. And the Gabbai thought he went crazy because he wouldn't let the Gabbai go on until he read it loudly and slowly. So he said, afterwards, he said, Rebbe, why are you making us read it loud and slow? He said, because every single one of these curses came true to us during the Shoah. Every single one. And now it's time for the brachos to come true. Every single one of the curses came true. And now we're ready for the blessings. Because Hashem promised us curses and the blessings. So now we wait for the blessings. Okay, we'll stop here and dive in uh, Mincha this time. Baruch, you have a yard site? Who's the yard site for?